Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio, a podcast fueled by a passion to support your journey in developing your most beautiful and optimal performance in life. Each episode is driven with the intention to elevate your mind. When we elevate our mind, we elevate our life. So get ready. It's time to rise. Goddessman. Safai. Mm-hmm. What's inspiring you right now? Uh, writing a book, actually, believe it or not. I believe it. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. Yeah. Tell me. Well, I wanted to do something that was very heart centered, which I know we're going to talk about here in a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, because that's the way I always flow, anyways. Mm-hmm. But for a long time, I've been asked, you know, write a book, write the book, write the book, you know, after doing all of these these posts online and like just constantly writing. And it was interesting. I've always felt ready to write it, but at the same time, I never wanted it to be forced. I wanted mm-hmm. to actually, you know, I wanted a, the time to just literally, and, and it's funny because I always tell everybody like, there's never the right time, but I do think intuitively there yeah. are. Like, yeah. I think that you never want to rush something that just naturally feels, um, like where you want to be with something naturally to yeah. do it, right? Without actually forcing it. Once you start to force it, I think you start to bring yourself out of out of your heart, right? right. From even doing it in the first place. And I never wanted to do it for the reasons of like, oh, we'll do the book because you're supposed to do the book. In mm-hmm. fact, actually any time in, in my life of building anything, anytime somebody told me you have to do it, that's usually when I wouldn't, right? Because I'm very anti-status right. quo. So I finally got to a place where it just felt right to write this book but also as a conversation to each person as the individual like i wanted to have a direct conversation with the reader yeah um because i already feel like i do that anyways online where each person has like their own relationship with me online where they're like how do you know like how do you feel how do you know what to say exactly this right now how do you you know it's like you're in my head or whatever it might be and i'm like well no i'm i'm you like i'm we're all we're all experiencing life on this earth right so it just felt right and I wanted it to be something that I can actually expand off of it. So you can have one main yeah. writing, one focused core place that we can really tackle a lot of stuff together. Yeah. And then branch off into, you know, a version for strictly for like men, let's say, mm-hmm. or one for business or one for like life and relationships and things like that. Yeah. And that's the part actually I haven't really talked about too publicly yet was just that it wasn't, it, I don't want it to just be just the one book. I like the idea of it um, being able to kind of expand into these different subcategories as well too. So. Well, yeah, because you, you know, one of the things I love so much about you is that you, 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 you're not just niche in this one territory. You really, you're, you're profound and you're, there's so much wisdom in in so many of these spaces. And to me, it's not just wisdom in these spaces. It's certainly that, but how I feel it to be with you is that these are real expressions of your heart. So you can't, you know, it's, it, it feels like it's going to be very natural for you to, to have these subcategories of books because what you're ultimately doing is, is you're just here expressing yourself. And as you evolve, you, you're expressing that evolution. And in that expression, there is contribution. And I, you know, I mean, I, I love, I love it all. I love, I love everything that you write about. Um, even some, you know, subjects maybe that like crypto and all that. I mean, I got really turned on by all that from you and, and even just how you approach. So driving the point home that even certain areas of expression that you put out that maybe I wasn't so tuned into your unique voice and way about it Mm -hmm. gets my attention. It's heart and soul. Yes. Right. Uh, we had that discussion. It's um, many times. <laughs> part of simplifying it is uh, so. Uh, well, there's a, there's a lot of things in there. I like the idea of um, seeing the wholeness of something, and um, then taking that, extracting that, and actually, you know, simplifying so we can get to the core of like the root understanding. Yeah. Right. When we do that, I think it makes also learning new subject matter a lot more fun. Yeah. So 
I'm also sharing a lot of times what I'm learning about myself or other endeavors, or even something as like complex as blockchain and crypto and things like that. But when you start to understand the fundamentals of like, and the foundation of something and what it's built on or what it's meant to do, and then you can also relate it to life in some capacity. Right. And then, and distill it down into something where people go, oh, like, that's not so scary to understand. It's like, no, it's really not. I mean, and I think that you find this in, in a lot of different subject matters. Like, like, And as humans, we tend to get worried about tackling new things in our life, mm -hmm. finance or the body mm -hmm. and our health, or, you know, pick any subject matter, right? Or love and relationships and all these things. And, you know, we think we kind of have a grasp on it because like we, we can play on the surface level of using certain words and whatnot. But at the same token, we're, we're also, if we're not in it in any of these things, they seem very elusive until you actually, which can complicate you. The mind can start getting, you know, yeah, making any, sure. any story it wants. But when you start actually going into these areas, you start to realize like there's actually a lot of very simple fundamental things in there that are not so scary and that are actually very, um, uh, they're just much easier to understand and much easier to grasp. And like life doesn't have to be so complicated, right? Yeah. So Well, and what I love too is that just taking that and teasing that out a bit, everything, you know, when you think about the fundamentals, if you go deeper, like it, it, it all points back to character or aspects of character. So even though one might not think crypto or this category right. would be affecting how you move through life mm -hmm. by knowing these fundamentals Right. And then, and ev we always say like everything affects everything. Mm -hmm. So I love that about you. I love how you're able to simplify and really present these fundamentals that do connect the dots that really lead back into character. I mean, integrity, you know, that was literally the piece of writing where I was like, okay, I, mm -hmm. Matt, you get it. And I'm paying attention because there's so much resonance there's like an alliance, right? Mm -hmm. Like I feel I lit integrity is a core value of mine, right? And I feel um so aside from that piece of writing, but just kind of going deeper into integrity now, you know, that's such a core piece in everything that is that that you express yourself from. Like everything that comes out of you, this is how I receive you, is so enriched with integrity. And I love that. It's important. It's 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 massive. I I for me it's massively important. Yeah. And I believe everybody wants and to to either play from integrity, receive integrity, you know, um, contribute to you know to to live a life of integrity. Yeah. But there's a lot of layers to that, you know, and um, it became very important to me because of character, right? So it's like integrity is regardless of how the external may behave to you, can you hold to a set of values and principles that um, you don't have to fully, you know, feel the results from it today, mm -hmm. but your soul can feel it. Your soul knows like, and I think when your soul knows that there's a, there's an innate peace that automatically comes with that. Yeah. You know, my father used to always say to me, God rest his soul. He used to always say, can you sleep well at night? And I said, very well. And that was his kind of thing about, you know, I mean, obviously there's other reasons for people don't sleep, but you know. Sure, sure. Yeah. He, his expression was more so from like business and how are you operating throughout the day? Yeah. Like, are you. Are, are you, you making, up? how are you showing up? How, what kind of choices are you making? You know, cause they can affect us, right? right? Even if they're subconscious and we don't even know that they're affecting us, but they can affect us. Yeah. And I was like that because no matter what, I know the type of choices or the intention I'm making, you know, yeah. and, and that it's coming from the heart. Then it's just a relationship of the boundaries and the, the balance between, yes. you know, understanding the heart, understanding my intentions. And then what is that in relation to how I interact with the world? Mm -hmm. And that is a forever practice. Yeah. Well, and it's so great. I mean, I I'd actually, I, I'm not confident that many would even think it comes down to integrity. Right. 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 Because more often than not, I feel that, I mean, so you know this about me very well, but it, it's all, it all points back to self, mm -hmm. right? You are the path, right? Mm -hmm. Journaling book. And so for me, you know, rather than 
looking at the external to try and curate what I want my life to look and feel like, I I tune into me, mm -hmm. into character, core values, integrity being one, right? But I don't feel that's the common route. I feel that, so let me say this, that's one of the things I love about what you you share is like you you kind of awaken, awaken people to the, the idea that, hey, you might not be looking over here, but actually this is the place to look. Right. Because this is very fair. the foundation that actually builds. Right. Right. But in, to know it's not, you know, I, I feel that we've been groomed as a society to look away from self. We, you and I talk about this all the time. I'm probably going to say that several times in this <laughs> conversation, but, you know, we're, we, we're so, you know, just keep looking out here, like follow this route, but anything that has you going, you know, this way towards within, we've been groomed to go the opposite and certainly don't listen to your heart. Your heart is weak. Your heart will get you into trouble. That's ego. <laughs> and 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 please expand because I really I love, this I love, is such a big topic. I love when people say that. Um, you know, uh, like if you tell them, like, well, go with your heart. Like, oh, well, you know, it's been hurt before, and I'm like, mm, that was your ego. You know, and I've spoken about that before. Um, your heart is the absolute truth. It is the it is all truth, and we sometimes I think in society associate. Um, heart and love only as um you know w with a lower shock or with your with your ego whatever it might be you know um i'm going to do this with an expectation or um you know i'm going to express myself and if it's not received then you know i'll feel this and to me that's not actually playing from the heart at all the heart and love is actually very honest in it even means that regardless of what I say. In fact, because I'm being very honest, that shows respect. And if I'm showing you respect, it means you know what you can expect from me. It means I'm going to be consistent and I'm going to be uh, forthright. I'm going to be direct. I'm going to be clear. I'm going to be all of these things. So you're actually guessing less about me, you know, and respecting more uh, and, and trusting more, right? So there's a lot of things with the heart and, you know, and I've expressed this to people about like, you can do this in business, you can do this in relationships, you can do this in friendships, you can do this with family. And um, I tell people like, well, if you got hurt using your heart, it was probably you, somewhere where you were really using your ego. If you use your heart and you add a boundary to it, mm -hmm. meaning like an example in business, you could say to somebody, you know, um, I don't think this is for me. Something feels off. So boom, tapping into your intuition. Something mm -hmm. feels off. Um, not what you're trying to do, just... I feel like I may not be the contributing party that you want for this. I know you might deep down inside want me for this, but something for me doesn't feel right. And if that doesn't feel right, I want to honor and respect you not to go through with this because if I do, um, I'll compromise me and you, you won't even get the best version of me then. Like, and you would only want whoever it is you bring onto this project or this deal to be the best possible fit that's really in their their lane and in their 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 sureness of it. Yeah. To me that's love, that's respect. I agree. Uh, now I also get that that was delivered though with with communication. Because if we can't express ourselves, yeah. then that's a problem because if you say no I'm not in. And by the way, I agree. You don't you don't actually have to explain yourself if you don't want to be like, you know what? This isn't for me. Like I'm but but you're going to be great. Like no problem. Um, you probably don't have to explain yourself, but I do like the idea of just showing the respect of just saying like, hey, not for me, but, you know, go right ahead. And and that just then all of a sudden, I think it it also, I've noticed that people remember you for that. Oh, yeah. They can count on you for honesty, for an honest opinion or for you or your truth, right? Yeah. And actually, that's I'm so glad you said your truth, because I, I want to put in here. Um, and I'm curious, I mean, I feel like you'll agree, but I'm curious to what you think. So when I say, cause I'm with you, the heart is truth. And I want to be clear. That's my truth. It right. may not be your truth right. or his or hers. But so I, I, I connect the dots here of like your autonomy is 100% in partnership with your authenticity. If you, so you think about the heart, 
she is truth. She is the queen in my world, right? She is what keeps me in my most authentic self. So anything that I want to truly say yes to or truly say no to, my heart lets me know, right? And then it's up to me to, you know, to 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 move in action from that. If I don't, well, it's likely because there's something in the external that has control over me, whether it's fear of rejection, whether it's I'm not going to go as far, I'm not going to get as much, whatever it is, you, you know, there's endless, but now my autonomy is actually compromised, right? Because somebody else is ruling me. So I just, that's really important for me personally to express because, you know, you, you're not going to, to really live a fulfilled life, number one, first and foremost, you, ha- in my opinion, you got to keep it real. You got to be operating from your most authentic self. So this means you're really gonna what? Tell me. Well, I know I, I I do agree. I agree completely. I, I and authenticity actually has two sides. Okay. It, I think it has the confidence of being yourself and the humility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a balance. Yeah. Because. Is it my truth? Yeah. Yes. Can I be wrong? Yes. Sure. And that's a really big deal because a lot of people, it's like, and we're seeing this kind of in society sometimes, like, you know, I'm just speaking my truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can be wrong too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I think, I mean, not you, but like, no, you no, know, no, society, no. When yeah. they do that. Like, so one thing that I really try to employ uh, for myself is in any given situation, the check in for me is, am I, you know, leading with intention and from my heart and, um, you know, and how am I, you know, am I rooted in how I'm communicating from that? And if somebody else were hurt by a situation or maybe they had a different experience with me or whatever it might be, I'm also open to listening to see if somewhere in there, I did end up actually causing, you know, a miscommunication or causing a whatever of a part of a, a part in that interaction, you know? So there's a lot of, there's a balance because, and because there, you can either have, you can have a person that's on either side. You can have one that lives on the side of like, I'm never wrong. I'm just living my truth. Right. And you have a person who's like always feeling guilty that they're always kind of like uh, yeah. contributing to, you know, oh, I'm so sorry. I could have done this better. Oh, like, no, like don't, you know, right. don't get so hard on yourself. I think there's a, there's a beautiful balance somewhere in the middle yes. of I'm confident in how I'm moving constantly checking in and you know how did i show up and i'm and i'm thinking about all the variables and and then you have to make a decision of listen i'm holding firm kind of on this like i i do like how i approach this and how i did this i'm sorry if this is not you know whatever um or you know what i i can understand that i felt that before too you know and i could see that and i can understand so you know so there's that balance between the confidence and the humility Right. In authenticity. No, absolutely. I, yeah. I, I love that. I'm Autonomy, so glad that you said. as you said. Yeah. And yeah. also, I mean, just playing off what you, you know, I can be my most honest self and do something that may not be in your best interest. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so it's not, but I'm still being myself. Exactly. Which, Exactly. It's fine. I'm not going to not be myself, but at the same time, and I think this is really what you're you're capturing, that doesn't mean that I, I'm not going, it's my way or the highway or nothing else, because that's not how we're going to get down mm-hmm. living with, you know, we all need each other, right? right? Yeah. So it's, but staying true to you. And by the way, straight up, I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's my truth. Uh, right. Is it? Is it your truth? Is it your experience? Is it your bias? Is it your is it what trauma? You you is should... it what you've seen? Is it only what you've seen? You know, and I, I think when we use that expression, it's my truth. You know, <laughs> I I separate out a lot. I, I just, I don't usually, and I don't think you do either, but I don't usually use the expression like it's my truth. I just, um, I my goal is not to title and categorize anything, just to simply use my heart in showing up in every situation. Mm. And then I have to, at an individual basis, make a decision yeah. on am I what role did I just play in any situation? Yeah. And that's I think as micro as you can get and very yeah. independent of every single experience. Otherwise, I'm either carrying old 
energy and old experiences into my present. Mm -hmm. And that's my truth. Right. Like my truth is that in the moment of exactly what is happening while I'm being present. Yeah. That's my truth right then that. and there um, versus, you know, labeling it and saying, you know, well, all people are this way. So therefore this is my truth. It's like, well, no, all of your experiences have been this way and you can change at any given point in time. So that's why I think we're that, you know, when I think of, you know, people say, listen, I'm just expressing my truth. It's like, well, um, you're expressing yourself. Right. And I would think that there's a lot of seasons of yourself. I love right? that. So. How's your season right now? <laughs> actually, <laughs> my, season, my season's actually, um, I just shifted into a new season and it feels very relieving. And well, the previous season was great. I think when you shift from one season to another, it's the in-between that's it's a little transition. shuffling. And uh, yeah, it's it's very transitionary, right? Um, or if that's word, transitioning. Yeah. Um, because you're constantly, it's like, I sometimes do an analogy. It's like you have your foot in one pool and a foot in the other pool. And both actually feel right in a lot of ways too. Well, depend. I mean, there are some seasons where you know that it's not right. right. Um, but and, habitually you're still right. safe comfortable there right? yeah um but i you know as having this discussion actually with a couple of different people but what happens when you you have a foot in two places one that it it's it's time to let go of the reins of really yeah. and, and move more into this this newer movement this newer energy right and honestly i mean this also really just comes down to the idea of just constantly moving and letting go, constantly moving and letting go, moving and letting go, moving and letting go. So we're we're able to go through things more fluidly and allow yeah. and receive um, versus <laughs> offer any additional resistance that we already don't, you know. Uh, and become. Yeah, but I like, mean, we're, but I get it. Like we're, we're human, it happens. And yeah. so, um, but going into a new season, um, it has a very, it's funny because when you've, in my idea in a new season is that you're, letting go of um, a previous season's everything, you yeah. know? And there's something new that emerges um, once the other energies have like left and you're now like, there's a creativity. There's a, there's just basically, basically it's a new relationship with yourself is really what it comes down to. And you feel it um, because you're like, you're back into like a, allowing, yes. you know? Um, and I believe that some and some seasons are lifetime and some seasons are you know very short term. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting dance uh, when you're in and allowing and in a receiving and um, you know you can get comfortable in a season because I think you can also sometimes start to establish more of your identity. Mm -hmm. Some people it's maybe the identity, but I, I I like to say more of an identity, meaning like because you're you're you've just given yourself even more from time that has now created whatever world that you've just created. Well, I mean, if all of a sudden you're moving out of that, <laughs> you know, like there's a letting go. Um, and then, and until I realized like, no, you're not really ever letting go of an identity. You're just appreciating its value. Yeah. Well, and you're evolving, you know, I know this very clearly in my life because it's, you know, I I've had already different careers, right? Like I, I transitioned out of a big career, when I say career, it's not just career, but it's like the whole life that you live with yeah. that career, right? Yeah. So then there's the identity and all that. And I did that very late in the game, late in the game, meaning I was so deep in it, right? Whereas like a lot of people would actually find it hard. Plus I was at the top of the game, which can make it even harder it's sticky because it's like, mm. oh, I've worked so hard to get here. And now I'm at this, do I really want to, you know, move yeah. on? But when you know, and this kind of goes back to the, the book piece, like for me personally, like, first of all, one thing that I've always been clear on is that I'm here to evolve. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm here to just like go and grow, grow and go. Right. And you know, that's very visible in like how many places in the world I've lived, et cetera. You I feel like we're very similar in that way too, where it's like, there's just, there's so many different evolutions, right? And where it gets, um, where it can be difficult is, and I love how you, how you express this, is just like, if you, if you, if you, if you get so attached 
to that season or that identity in that season and you suppress your, how I like to frame it, your becoming, call it evolution. This is a very internally, yeah. uncomfortably frictiony. It's control issues too, I yes. think. It's control <laughs> issues, right? Yeah. So uh, that's what I, I've found that um, part of that comfort is because you know what to expect. Yeah. And part of why you know what to expect is because you've been able to show up a certain way mm -hmm. and create outcomes if you will yeah. right and um but we're always um we're always learning to play with uncertainty more and that is basically faith so we're moving out of um yes we can control our character mm -hmm. and we can control our like disciplines of how we get up every day and and really show up and, you know which also leads back into character mm -hmm. but we cannot control the outside world and we need to leave flexibility to receive um, yes. uh, through our intuition into our heart uh, so we can be more fluid. If we're too controlling, we start to attach. Yeah. And I found that that's, that's the hard part, right? To sometimes let go of because your goal isn't to attach, in my opinion. Your goal yeah. is to um, show up and then receive, show up and receive, give and take, right? Yeah. Um, and that requires a lot of letting go and that requires a lot of faith and a lot of different people have a lot of different means to how they get that. Yeah. But, um, but moving into uncertainty and being comfortable with uncertainty is a practice. Right. Like I think it's a very, and, and cause a lot of people will say like, well, you know, it's, it's well, uncertainty. I don't think is that it's not uncertainty. It's just that you just don't know all the variables. Right. So you're having to basically trust on a feeling right. that's brand new. Right. And I <laughs> I was asked about this recently and what happens when you are your body is used to a certain way. You see these people with with habits whether they're good or bad. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cases with bad habits. Um and right here you know what to do and you know what to expect even though it may not be serving you in your highest good. Mm -hmm. But over here you may actually be um supposing supposed to be flowing over here in your intuition yeah there's no variables yeah it's complete uncertainty but you just know mm -hmm. you just know yeah now what happens is everybody around this line over here mm -hmm. as you are operating is like you're going to jump lines like what's going to happen if you do that and so what starts to happen is all the stimulus around you all of the in external environments and the internal inputs basically yep. are are signaling to the nervous system mm -hmm. you know i don't have data over here yes i can't help you you're out on your own you're you know i don't know what's going to happen to you i don't know what you're going to do i don't know the and and then it triggers the mind and it triggers the you know all these different things inside the body and it's interesting even in a transitionary mode like so you're jumping from one season to another mm -hmm. and what happens when you're jumping from that season to another the body's like oh shit i can't give you anything i don't i don't know i don't have any data right and so it can almost feel like shutting down on you anxiety or depression or worry or fear or like, yes. you know, uh, or squirreliness in the mind. I mean, anything and everything can kind of come up, which is interesting because really all it is, is it's a huge exercise in letting go. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to be fine. Yeah. But man, like the process of letting go shows you exactly how much we are really trying to control all the time. 100%. And um, when you real and as I'm continuing to practice that relationship with uncertainty it's causing me to have to listen to my intuition. I have to like feel into it. I have to try to understand. And nobody else can understand it. Yeah. And the reason why nobody else can understand it is because nobody's sharing the same soul. Right. So that, so, but we seek external validation. Yes. We have other people trying to help us like make a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like seeking the whys that won't give you the answer. Because the whys that won't give you the answer know better because they know they can't answer it for you. Yes. They can only just kind of listen to you in a way that says, you know, how how do they help direct you even further into your heart? Sure. Yeah. No. You know? No, it's perfect. And I it's, love that. It's, it's cool true. Having people like that, right? It's so important. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz they're living from their heart. So yeah. they know. They you know. Well, they know they know. They yeah. know that they can't like they know that they're not you. They yeah. know that you're they're not you're not that soul. They've experienced it themselves before too. Yes. They're like I can't give that to you. I can't give you the answer. Right. Like I want to, but I can't. That I like seeking people who are committed to not giving you the answer, mm -hmm. but they've been through it. Mm -hmm. So they know. 
and yeah. they can guide you. I, I feel like their energy alone can kind of guide you because you're now like feeling much more. Um, you've done this before, right? You know, and then like, well, yeah, you know, and then you can actually learn from their experience. Mm-hmm. So they're teaching from a relatable experience versus telling you what to do. Totally. You know? And it's cool because I think it makes it like, and this is, I think where it comes back to um, connection it then and relatability is basically saying like, cool, somebody else has done this too. Mm-hmm. I'm not alone. It's I'm comforting. not crazy. Cool. Somebody else has done this. And I think, and to really circle it all back, that was just like even online, like in with content and with writing, all I'm basically validating is that you're not crazy for mm-hmm. the most part. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> but like <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for every single person on there. No, but I mean, but for the most part, all I'm doing is I'm just trying to validate without validating. Like, no, what you're feeling internally, that happens. Yeah. And how you were trying to navigate it, yeah. you are not alone. We are all trying to navigate it. It's just that you're probably watching, like I'm watching an external world where everybody is kind of navigating on a surface level, mm. but we're not really sharing what's happening internally yeah. while we're navigating those waters. I'm trying to bring the internal out. Yeah. So people can be like, shit, cool. This is not just me. Like I'm not, I'm not out here all by myself. And and that's where I think the content becomes very relatable because, and they're like, well, how do you know my, in my mind? I'm like, yeah. because we're all going through it. Right. We're all going through it. Just different. Yeah. Diff- yeah. No, I love, I know. I love that. That, you know, that is such an expression of you. Um, and it is very comforting because when you are living from your most authentic self, when you are living, I frame it as like a path creator. When you're a path creator, this is your, your life is your life. Sure. There can be some similarities in other people's path and and maybe these people become close people in your life for that reason, whatever, but ultimately it's you. Right. And so in this, you trust yourself, you, you have to trust, you have to yourself. To trust yourself. Yeah. Which is everything like that's, that is a, that is a lifelong practice. Yeah. You have to be, are you able to, are you a trustworthy person? You mm-hmm. only know if you're able to trust yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you yes. Know? So, and that is some self observation. Self-awareness. You know, and self-awareness. Self-awareness is everything. Yeah. It's at literally the core of yeah. everything. For me, I'm always like, and it's funny, I talk about this a lot because I'm like, it's such a core part of, you know, all my writing, speaking. I'm like, listen, I understand, you know, I'm guiding you to, you know, dive into deeper levels of self-awareness, like doing the work that cultivates that. And it's really not sexy work. Like you can't hang self-awareness on the wall. You can't get in it and drive it. You can't, you know, put it on a where, right. But when you strip everything down, ultimately that you want growth on the highest ultimate level, you want to be that most incredible expression of self. If you do not have strong levels of self-awareness, you're, you're wishing you're, you're never going to get it. We need to be able to observe ourselves. And this came to me one day writing in the airport, I was traveling and it was like such a moment, you know, and I was like, you can't be judging and learning at the same time. You can't be judging. And I was like, damn, that was a very like, holy shit moment. Just to, position that here because it fits in perfectly. This practice of self-awareness, I'm not saying sit there and judge yourself as you observe yourself. You're trying to learn and understand yourself. So we need to be, be the student of self. And that's how you're really going to be able to get the data to collect, you know, honest information, you know, that's actually going to support your growth in self and in your life, right? I think it's the collection of your heart and your, um, I had a word a minute ago. I was like, you, you sparked, um, I'll remember it, but if I start talking, yeah, it'll, it'll yeah, like, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. But, um, when you were talking about, so, oh, and grace, that's what it is. It's mm. grace. Yeah. Um, because, you're you, like, you made a good point. You're not here to judge yourself. You're just here to observe. And the idea is, oh, I see that now. And, um, and we have to be very careful about dissecting ourselves too much. It's more so to identify, 
a signal through a signal where to make the change, not necessarily tear ourselves down. Exactly. And that can, and, but that, that's not always easy. I know we can say it, but it's not always easy because sometimes we learn something about ourselves and then you can see the ripple effect of all the other ways maybe it, you know, was connected to. So that's where grace comes in because it's like, okay, you see it now. Yeah. You understand it. Now let's use grace and heart to be like, where was it? You know, where did it all happen this way? Mm-hmm. Cool. I got to forgive myself. Can't forgive others if you don't know how to forgive yourself. Right. I love it. You can forgive others and say you forgive others, but if you're, you may not, fu- I think you may not fully be in forgiveness if you also haven't learned how to forgive yourself too. Yeah, it's you like know? love. You know, yeah, it's right? all love actually right. is what that is. So when you, I think when you, when you know how to forgive yourself, this is why the relationship you have with yourself does dictate everything else because you suddenly, well, now I have empathy when somebody makes a mistake, but I also have grace. I'm not going to judge, but, uh, and I'm also not going to own it. Like it's theirs, right? So we, you know, the relationship we have with ourselves really does dictate how we start to better understand other, everybody else. That's why when I see a lot of people who project outwards so much, I'm like, but even if you are even right in, in like your statement or what you are, you know, forming on somebody else, it are, but it's still showing me at what level, if that's all you ever do is project outwards, it's showing me the lack of the relationship you might have with yourself. You know, I was taught a long time ago and I love this conversation, which is, would you rather be right or would you rather be righteous? You know, and talked about it before here in the studio. It's, it, would you rather be right? Would you rather be righteous? You know? That's yeah. a, those are two very different concepts. No, yeah. And so um, I think that the, the greater relationship we have with ourself, um, whether I'm right or I'm wrong in any given situation, um, it's how I handle my interaction with the other person. Yeah. You know, knowing that. Because you, then now you're playing from it's not about being right or wrong, you know? Right. Um, and for the most part, I mean, I, and I'm not talking about like, you know, no, we're going to dra- <laughs> we're going to build the building this way differently and it's going to be wrong. And therefore, you know, like, <laughs> no, but I'm talking about, but even then it's like, you know, um, how you, how you handle people is basically how you handle yourself. That's, I think really the, the main point I'm going with is how you handle people is how you handle yourself. So if I see somebody constantly handling people really lousy or really, uh, angry. Yeah. You're mad. You're upset with yourself. Right. And you could say that you're not, but there's no way you're going to be this way to all these other people. You're going to only treat other people the, with the relationship you have with yourself. Yeah. So I mean, even you've like, got to be you, upset in, in a relationship. I, I've had this in conversations before. Like you want to know how that person's going to be as a partner. Look at how they treat themselves. Yeah. What, yeah. Like, how does that not make sense? Yeah. Every way that they're showing up for themselves in all the ways that they do or right. not, well, then that's where right. you're, you know, so you're, you're, you're so right. And that's, again, like, I think, you know, this work of self of, you know, and when I say work, right, it's not this like, oh, you know, put on the glasses or like, it's, it's, it's no, it's not always doing. In fact, sometimes the most productive thing that you can do in terms of work with yourself is to be still. It's nothing. It's to surrender. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. Sometimes the most work you ever will do is nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I know. It's, you know so, it's, a, it's a complexly simple yes, thing, you yeah. know, because, right. because control issues, because... No, I'm I'm baiting you right now. Because because <laughs> the control issues is I I have to solve it, you know, or I want I I need to know or I'm uh, you know, I can't just sit in unsureness and it's like, right. well, maybe it's not your job in this moment to have the answer. Maybe it's your job to calm down into a place that can receive. Yeah. Yeah, and also like stop trying to think through everything. Cuz in that doing nothing you're actually feeling. Right. And, you know, listen, I get it. That That's very scary and difficult for a lot of people for perhaps a lot of valid reasons even. Like there's a lot of shit that people don't want to face about themselves and certain feelings, right? So it's so much easier to be in thinking mode and doing mode all the time. But, you know, when you're already getting signals 
that something's off. And it's, you know, this, you know, we know, I know in my life for sure, it's like, hold up. I got it. And I love, I'm a woman of action, right? But there is such an action in the non-action as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the feminine energy just saying like, hey, can we just put it down for right now and just take a breath? Grounding, grounding into the heart. Yeah. You know, allowing yourself to to calm down. You know, uh, so, okay, so you bring up the feminine. I, I've talked about every person has both the feminine and the masculine in them, the energies. Um, I learned that the left side, which makes sense, is where the feminine energy lies, the heart. If you look at a warrior, right? Uh, a man who is just speaking as a man for men, like a man that um, if he's out on the battlefield of life, and, and this really can apply to anybody, really. When you're out in the world and you're constantly interacting with a lot of energies and a lot of different things, distractions or... Um, or just different kind of energy or anything. If you're not careful, it can disconnect you from the heart. Well, the heart is what helps you discern and make really great decisions and um, allows you to feel and allows your honesty and allows you to use your intuition. So no matter what you do, you want to bring yourself back down to a period of rest, right? To allow yourself to ground back into the heart and not get disconnected and only try to solve things either from the mind or just from a set of experiences that happen in a moment of time that don't even, they no longer exist. Yeah. But it's so, it could be easy if you're staying constantly in these experiences, mm -hmm. now the only thing you are drawing from is that versus your intuition. So the ability to calm down into the heart is everything because it, it grounds you in a way to be able to be like, all right, Let's start again. Yeah. Let's like let's let's keep connecting so that way I can see clearly through the experiences versus just simply being a product of them. Right? One of the things I love so much that you talk about is you know the connection between clarity and you know directional kind of like being yeah. directional and so you know that what you just shared it's such a perfect connection there to say like it is that stopping slowing down grounding into the heart mm -hmm. that's going to give you the space that will then create more of the clarity that ultimately like when you when you are shaken inside a lot of times there's it's the, your your harmony your peace is disturbed and a lot of times that's because you there is a lack of clarity in some or maybe yeah. many areas right and so it's really just like it's it's right. so difficult and uncomfortable but that 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 pulling the switch, you know, to say like, hey, okay, I'm gonna actually just stop, slow down. I'm gonna breathe so I can get a real, a real view of what's going on, mm -hmm. and not necessarily, um, not even doing it from that like, I'm gonna do this so that I get that. It's more of just like I think really living into again. It's like the feeling thing because we're so I think, especially if you're a, as a high performer we're so up here a lot, you mm -hmm. know, up in the mind. Right. And so we're just like thinking, doing, thinking, doing, I mean, you know, this like problem solving, problem solving. And that is, you know, more often than not, what can, if we're not mindful or like, if we're not, if we don't stay rooted, like we'll, the separation will start to happen. And then you'll feel it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You'll feel it. And I've noticed that as you become higher and higher in your performance, you can go longer periods of sustained time before you disconnect, but disconnect can still happen. Yeah. And each time you have to be self-aware to pull yourself up out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've really found where, um, because anytime I, I, I stop having clarity or feeling grounded or I'm anxious or something is happening, that, that tells me I like, that's a that's a signal right away. Like, no, you you need to stop. You need to pull yourself up out of it immediately. Um, and you can even test that theory, and you'll start to see it. Like, it'll build upon itself. It'll multiply. Yeah. And so I've yeah I've noticed that like you have to have that ability to to pull yourself up out of it, notice it, then pull yourself up out of it, and say, all right, you know what? I need to I need I need a I need a moment to sort through everything. I need to see 
everything. Yeah. We've been going really strong, but I need to see some things. I need to pull myself out of it and like what just came together and why. And, and, and again, that's, I think, flexibility too, because you can't just be go, go, go. You, you have to have that ability to observe what you're even creating and building in the first place. Right. And especially if there's other people involved. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know what I love too with you is that it's, um, it's just the, the building is very, very centered and rooted in heart and soul. And I, I, I don't, that's not the common, you know, and it's just that again, it, it all comes back. This is just my observation. I think it's just, it has so much to do with, you know, what we have been groomed to see success, to see wealth, you know, all of this stuff, like, right. And it's, it's, you know, so you're driven by a lot of, which when I say material, like, let me just say this, like, I love money. Mm -hmm. I love luxury, it, like shit, <laughs> like dude. money gives me my health and my health is number one, you know? Right. So I say that, but, you know, as a creator myself, I'm creating from my heart and soul, going back to the very yeah. beginning of the talk, like your sub, you know, categories. It's like, this is not, oh, if I do this, then it gives me that. It's, right. this is what's in my heart. This is what I feel the collective could actually, you know, you know, um, uh, what's the word? just benefit from perhaps or not, but I'm here to express this from me, from my heart and soul and yeah, just put it out. Right. You know what I love is that people um, actually believe it or not, place a limit on abundance. Have you really yeah. thought about that? It's all of these things. Yeah. So it's not more. <laughs> That's really so think about that. Yeah. Really think about that. Right. It's these cars and houses and homes and you're living here and you're doing this like, is it not more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do I say that? Because the, well, there's a, there's a lot in there. I once heard a, a rabbi mention this. I think this came from, I think this was in Torah, but I think they also mentioned this actually in the Bible too, but about, um, you know, the external, like the material world is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with owning things. Yeah. The, there, there's lots of abundance of luxuries and things to have. And, you know, but the goal is that you own them. They don't own you. Yes. If they own you, you're going to run into a few problems. <laughs> Basically you're, you're, you know, you're, you may not feel the way you think that owning them is going to feel mm -hmm. right. And so we are meant for abundance. So that's that's the first thing, but not from the standpoint of where we're driven so much by what we acquire, but where, and because then that has a limit. That's the irony versus if I'm operating from my heart and I'm happy mm -hmm. or I'm working on my happiness always, you know, and my peace, that in itself allows without attaching to like this picture, mm -hmm. anything that I couldn't have even thought of right. on top of that. While the bonus is picking up some of the material along the way. And yeah. so I think it's a very, it's, it's, it's it really, if you really dissect, like when people are like, you know, oh, I'm, a, I'm an abundance uh, law of attraction, I'm this and that. And by the way, it's fine. Like I, I, yeah. I'm not to put down, you know, the different things. I think it's great to think about how we attract things in our life and, and how we're moving with energy and all that. But, but it's just interesting when we constantly use the external world to label abundance. Yeah. Isn't that limiting? Right. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> you know a great mean? point. No, it's so true. It's so true. Next time on Black Belt BD Radio. Negotiating with your intuition, you're going to lose every time. You will lose every single time. You may take a few years out yeah. <laughs> you know, of the process, but your intuition, your guiding force knows. It just knows. And when we try to negotiate with it, you know, to kind of make it, mold it, fit it in with our own agenda, our own yeah. wants and desires and things like that, one shows a lack of faith, um, yeah. you know, and two shows the control issue again. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, um, and, and it's just, a, it's, it's an interesting thing to, to just observe basically. Right. When you, when you really think about it. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, you guys. If you loved it, please share it on your social. 
Throw it up on your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I am also at Roxy Look, R-O-X-Y-L-O-O-K. I love connecting with you guys. This is a conversation that I want to just continue growing with you guys. So if you feel inspired to hit me up, do so in that space. I always enjoy hearing from you. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by rating it and reviewing it via iTunes. It's such supportive help, you guys. It really helps the visibility of this podcast. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for doing that. And on that note, you guys, I'm signing off with all my love and always looking forward to catching you on the next.